Hi there, thanks for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard and this is just one gorgeous Rhythm and Blues masterpiece from 1959. What a lineup, what a colorful graphic splash, what a beautiful original globe poster, you know, the jumbo 22 by 28 inch window card. Just a real beauty of a poster, just lovely with great acts on it. I actually remember when this was first discovered, I heard about it and then went over and saw it. It was like somebody said, you know, we had seen a few Sam Cooks from the 60s on concert poster, and Jackie Wilson had been mentioned on a couple of 50s things uh, in a in much smaller size. And when somebody said there was a 59 from the 50s concert poster with both Sam Cooke and Jackie Wilson, with pictures of them and with song titles, it was like, that's it! That's the sole dream or the R&B dream poster I've been thinking of and wonder if, wondering if it existed. And of course, so many of these things are so buried in closets, you never know. I'll give a close-up scan here first. <clears throat> Chattanooga, Tennessee is the city in which this event happened. Of course, it's a tour blank, meaning others can be found or certainly were made with other cities and dates in there. And you just, I'll go into detail on these, but first just a quick look at um, all the variety of Rhythm and Blues acts on there and all the neat colored squares and everything. It's just really, just really a nice, nice graphic poster. It's cool. So, who do you top bill, Sam Cooke or Jackie Wilson? Well, obviously, the booking agent or tour promoter or the managers got together or just chart power dictated that Sam Cooke would be top billed. He had a little more juice at the time with the chart action. Um, his current hit was um, Everybody Loves the Cha-Cha. I have to throw the third cha on there because that's what he sings. Um, but he had had eight top 40 pop hits, not just R&B, but powerful pop hits, eight in the top 40, including this Everybody Loves the Cha-Cha-Cha. Cha -cha, which uh, went to um, number two R&B, by the way, so a real monster on the R&B charts. And his new single that was just charting for Sam Cooke, only 16. So boy, was Sam ever on a roll. Look at that. There's a picture of him. And everybody loves the cha-cha. And just really nice. So then you have Jackie Wilson. And what's neat is that on June 10th, 1959, he, was just, he just turned 25 years old the day before, on June 9th. So he was a brand newly minted 25-year-old. Jackie was, and it's got two really great song titles on there, Lonely Teardrops and That Is Why. It's a little bit of a misnomer because the record was called That's Why. But those were, um, <clears throat> excuse me, those were his last two hit singles, and they both went top 20 pop, again the powerful pop chart, and both were co-written, by the way, by Barry Gordy Jr., the eventual co-founder of Motown Records, so uh, Jackie was really it. And Lonely Teardrops, of course, is more famous than the other one. Lonely Teardrops is his signature song and one for the ages, and a matter of fact was number one on the R&B charts for seven weeks, so that's really quite a stay. Okay, before I get too far back, I, get, I guess there's the third build act, Hank Ballard and the Midnighters, originators of The Twist, of course, but it was uh, not them that made it famous like Chubby did. But anyway, Hank Ballard and the Midnighters. Hank is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, as are Sam and Jackie. So that, that top trio down the middle there, all Rock and Roll Hall of Fame members. But this is when things really get tricky. This is really... <laughs> if you think things have been tricky so far, just wait for this. Okay, so Hank Ballard and the Midnighters. The two song titles are The Kansas City Twist, see that, and Teardrops on My Pillow. Well, the typesetter setter made an egregious error because the Midnighters had a huge hit with Teardrops on Your Letter, not My Pillow, Your Letter. And there was no song called Teardrops on My Pillow at the time that it could have been confused with. And so just a real crazy turnaround juxtaposition of words just kind of really makes it funny. Actually, not a juxtaposition. It's just totally different words. You know, pillow and letter are obviously two different nouns in the English language. The only thing I can think of, it's possible the typesetter got it mixed up with a huge R&B hit from the previous fall by Little Anthony and the Imperials that was called Tears on My Pillow. And so they went and put teardrops on my pillow, but sorry, the Hank Ballard hit with the Midnighters was teardrops on your letter. So that's, you know, pretty funny. Okay, so underneath the Ballard and Midnighters, we have Marv Johnson. See that? Come to me. Now that was his first hit, and it was a top 10 R&B hit, and it was the record number, by the way, was Tamla 101 in the South. And you know what that signifies? That signifies the very first release on Barry Gordy Jr.'s new record company Dream, which would turn into Motown Records. So how cool is that? It, it was released nationally, on United Artists because Tamla didn't have national distribution yet, but locally it was on Tamla and Marv Johnson's 
um, uh, Come to Me is definitely the first 45 RPM release by Barry Gordy's new record company. That is so cool. And a matter of fact, Marv Johnson, well, he co-wrote it with Barry Gordy Jr. And uh, they co-wrote another four songs, I think it was. And as a result, Marv Johnson is credited by historians as being the co-creator of the Motown sound. So, wow, is that a strong foursome down the middle of that poster? That's really awesome. That's something else. And of course, Marv Johnson later would have a big hit, um, in fact, later this year, later in 59, with You Got What It Takes, which is a real catchy, very familiar household name song that I think even the Dave Clark Five had a big hit with a number of years later, so that's pretty cool. Okay, there's a lot of artists on this poster. We'll get to a couple of them. We don't have time for them all, but there's the Falcons. And uh, they had, you know, a big hit there, um, You're So Fine, with your, a little misspelled, but that's okay. And one of those guys, one of those five members, is no less than Eddie Floyd, who would go on in the mid-60s and have a huge number one R&B hit with a household name song, Knock on Wood. So that's pretty cool to know that uh, 70, you know, years before they were sort of famous is there. Now we move over to Jesse Belvin. There's Jesse with his nice... Uh, photograph and that nice colored box and guess who is the name of the song that was a top 10 R&B hit no slouch by any means and it was written by his wife Joanne so you might say okay so why did Pete mention that sort of who cares we have a lot of things to cover here well I mention that because Jesse Belvin and his wife Joanne sadly were killed together in a car accident just eight months after this concert so I definitely wanted to mention her by name and give them a shout out and just say that's uh, that's really sad and that's 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 really unfortunate of course. Okay, moving on musically below Jesse Belvin, there's Johnny Watson with a neat picture of him. He uh, uh, got the nickname Johnny Guitar Watson and he would go on to a long career. He went through lots of transformations, went through funk and soul and all these different things. And uh, matter of fact, he was still charting in the mid 1990s. But here he is in his first decade, just very simple and, and simplistic and just straight old Johnny Watson. So that's, that's kind of funny. So, you know, with a poster like this that's so huge and so beautiful, there are so many people, so many ways to get lost if you're an artist. Oh, speaking of getting lost, how could we forget the lower right-hand corner? What's that? No photo, no song title, almost no nothing. Two words, seven letters, the pips, and that's all. Is that hilarious? The Pips, with 15-year-old Gladys Knight in the group, would become future Rock and Roll Hall of Famers. And look how lowly billed they are, below the Master of Ceremonies. <laughs> oh, that's too much. Wow. That's really, that's what I love about old concert posters. You just, you know, you never, when they're being laid out, what are people thinking? And of course, people just hadn't advanced along in their career yet sometimes. So that's really cool. So um, sometimes you can get really lucky and find two copies of a po two copies of a poster, and I guess I did on this one, but wait a minute, why, why the size discrepancy? What's going on here? 